And we're going to continue in a message that we began uh, a few weeks ago, the third uh, sequence here. It's called Continuing in God Despite the Challenges. And a lot of us are going to significant challenges today, and some of you are thinking about throwing in the towel. Don't do that. Uh, it's time for us to uh, continue to do things of God and to pursue Him more progressively than what we ever have in the past. And uh, we're going to um, enter into the message in First Peter, the fourth chapter, and the twelfth through the 14th verse. Let me pray first. Father God, we thank you for all who are here today. We thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Take it from the realm of Logos to the realm of Rhema, that it might be tangible reality in the, the hearing audience, that everything I say, Lord, is supported by the word of God. Give me supernatural recall of your word, and don't flesh my glory in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me read First uh, Peter, the fourth chapter, and uh, the twelfth verse. Uh, here is uh, the Apostle Peter uh, uh, speaking. It says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. So he's making it clear that uh, we are going to have some fiery trials, uh, which uh, we have to contend with in life. And some of you are going through many of them right now, as though some strange thing has happened to you. Uh, it's amazing how people say, why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? Why not you? I say that all the time. It's part of the lay of the land. Uh, Adam sinned, and when he sinned, uh, he opened up... Uh, Pandora's box, which we call Ra. So all the things that uh, you knew about, or what he knew about, things you don't even know about or can even comprehend, uh, were, was unleashed uh, on the earth uh, because of that sin. And today we're still contending with it. We're still trying to manage what's happening to us in our lives, even though we were children of God. That particular phrase, a fiery trial, is from the Greek word uh, perusis. And what it means is to ignite, I think we may have addressed this a little bit last week, to cause the smelting process to begin, which is a cleansing process that cooks metal at extremely high temperatures to remove the impurities called dross. So in essence, uh, just like the metals go through extreme heat in order to remove the dross or the waste product from them, similarly today, the Lord permits us to go through various things to help remove uh, the excess uh, impurities and things that uh, shouldn't be in our nature, uh, challenge is one of the ways to uh, remove it, and that's what the Lord permits. He allows challenge to come so we can grow to the full stature of Christ Jesus. Similarly, in our lives as believers, the Lord has ordained fiery trials to remove things that hinder uh, our, us for fulfilling our development in Christ Jesus. And uh, the 13th verse continues, says, but rejoice. So in response to the things that the Lord permits to come our way, and we'll talk about that permission uh, uh, that God uh, uh, does in allowing us to be well-rounded and developed in the things of God. It says, but rejoice, 13th verse of um, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. It says, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. So if you can just think of it in those terms, that the suffering that we're going through uh, we're actually partaking of the kinds of sufferings that Christ has gone through uh, during his sojourn here in the earth realm, where he lived for 33 years and went through the same kinds of things that we are going through today. We have not a high priest. Uh, the Lord Jesus is a high priest of our confession uh, who have not been tempted uh, in the way, in all ways as we are, but yet without he lived without sin, praise God. So he understands what it means to be human and all the different kinds of adversity that comes against us uh, as human beings, especially uh, for those who are children of God. Let me read again, 13th verse. But rejoice to the extent that you're, you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So the joyous time is coming, praise the Lord, when Christ Jesus, of course, comes and establishes his kingdom in the earth realm. We said some things about that last week. Let's go to the 14th verse. If you are reproached, and what that means is criticized or blamed, then certainly that's something that comes to all of us for the name of Christ. So people will criticize you and blame you, sometimes directly and indirectly, um, for the name of Christ because of your association with him. Blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. And you need to think in those terms that the spirit of glory and the spirit of the Lord rests upon me. On their part, those who are blaming you, those who are criticizing you be simply because you're a child of God, um, 
on their part, he is blasphemed. The Lord is being blasphemed when they speak against you. But on your part, he is glorified. So even though uh, things may come against you, people may do things to you that makes life difficult for you, uh, especially what they say is blasphemy against the Lord. Uh, they are opposed to the things of God. Uh, they are opposed to you, but really they are opposed to the things of God because you are his representatives here in the earth realm. Apostle Paul also explains the reason for tribulations that we encounter in life in Romans, the, uh, the uh, eighth chapter, 28th verse. Um, I may not spend as much time on it as uh, previously uh, because we have addressed this a little bit. It says, and you know, this is Apostle Paul speaking to we who are believers, for we know, I'm reading from the King James Version, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Notice that the Lord has a purpose uh, and he desires to fulfill through us. So a lot of people don't recognize that, but the, the purpose uh, is being fulfilled uh, through us as believers today. And sometimes that purpose may not agree with you as a human being, and it may take development in order for you to uh, begin to receive them as something that's ordained of God. The phrase work together in that particular verse, Romans 8th chapter, the 28th verse, is from the Greek word synergio, and I think I mentioned it last week, which is the word from that word we get our modern word synergy, and uh, that came into vogue a few years ago. I used to hear a lot about synergistic and synergy and all that. Uh, I think it's a term that's probably been around now 50 to 70 years that people use on a regular basis. Uh, and that's the basis for our modern word, uh, synergio, synergy, meaning uh, in the context of this particular verse that we're reading in Romans 8 and 28, that both good and bad things work together collaboratively for the good of the child of God. And that's a strange statement. You mean the Lord is cooperating with the devil? Uh, collaboration means to work for a common purpose. Uh, and uh, But unfortunately, the purpose that uh, the enemy has is different from the purpose that the Lord has, but he works with him anyway because whether the devil likes it or not, the purpose that God has is going to be fulfilled. And uh, so many times the enemy is unwitting pawn to the plan that God has for us, which is always for a child of God, it always works out for good. Whether it seems on the surface to be bad, ultimately it will be for our good. And, and you need to think of those things in terms of what's happening now with the uh, Conoris virus, who, where all of us are being negatively impacted by it, but the, the Lord said it will work together for good. So it doesn't just work by itself. There's other things happening behind the scenes, and I always say to you that the Lord's trying to wind this thing down, bring this to an end. He has a, a purpose and a plan that he must fulfill uh, in the earth realm, and he fulfills it through us, not just believers, but also for people who are unbelievers, certain things they have to do in order to cause the course that God has ordained to, to become operational and to be fulfilled. So the light, in light of uh, the uh, understanding of what uh, has been said here, uh, good and bad things working together for the child of God, for the Lord's purpose and for his good, um, uh, Jacob, uh, the patriarch, has, is a great example. If we look at his life where um, things took place, and I think I hit this maybe a little bit, that um, uh, Jacob, who was the father of Joseph, uh, gave him a coat of many colors. And some of you, I think, remember that from your Sunday school classes. It was a beautiful coat. And uh, as a result of that, it kindled envy and animosity and jealousy amongst his brothers against him. He had, uh, at that point, I think he had 10 of the brothers. And all of them came against him uh, because of, not all of them, but uh, his oldest brother, Reuben, tried to stop them from selling him into slavery. Uh, because they really were angry at him because dad had chosen a special child. Give him, why didn't he give all of us a robe? Gave him a robe, gave him a coat of many colors. And uh, so he went walking through the household talking about what his father had blessed him with. And they didn't like that. And we talked about this a little bit about parents doing things that can cause, uh, cause animosity and em envy between uh, siblings because it wasn't done in the right spirit. Praise the Lord. So, I felt today that we need to go back and, and look at uh, what happened with uh, that situation that prompted his brothers to sell him into slavery. And it's captured in Psalms 105, verses 16 through 22. I'm going to read from the New King James Version for clarity's sake. So, moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He 
uh, being God himself, not the devil. The Lord called for this. Uh, he destroyed all the provision of bread. So he said the food sustenance was uh, removed. There was nothing to eat, no bread, no meat, no nothing. Uh, it's meager means is what they were living by. And uh, it was called by the Lord, not called by the devil, but called by the Lord. And so he has certain plans that he wants to fulfill. And so he uses many times the things that are already in the earth realm to fulfill those plans. And if you look at the life of David, uh, even beyond what I'm going to read here, I'm not David, the life of Joseph, even beyond what I'm going to read here, there were a lot of factors that took place, and most of them were negative, that Joseph had to go through in order to reach the, time, the point, the fulfillment that God wanted to have, uh, the manifestation of his goal. Uh, and so what I say to you is that many times you have to go through a lot of suffering and pains and problems in order to get to the ultimate purpose that God has uh, that he's putting you through in life. And similarly, we're all, all older now than what we were yesterday. I'm a lot older than what I was a few days ago. I had a birthday this month. And so I'm one year older. And thinking and contemplating all the things I've gone through, there have been many negative things that I've gone through, but I have to go to the negative in order to get to the positive that God had ordained for us, his purpose fulfilled. Now, because of my age, I've fulfilled a lot of things that God has ordained for me, and many of them were not pleasant things I had to go through. And some of you are maybe going through. Don't whine and complain. That's part of the lay of the land. God is still protecting you. God is still looking over you. He's still ordering your steps because you're chosen of God. You are a champion of God. He said, uh, a good man or the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and he did life in his ways. But that word there is really not in the book of Hebrews. Uh, well, in uh, uh, the book of uh, Psalms, the uh, 37th chapter, you know, uh, the, the point that's made there in that particular verse is that you're going to go through all sorts of things. But the steps of a, it's not the word good man, it's a warrior of God, a valiant one. And so uh, we need to substitute that in. If you look it up in the Hebrew word, uh, dialect from which it is translated, it is the, a warrior of God, a champion, a valiant one. And that's what I am. That's what you are. If you go through the ordeals and the challenges the Lord permits to happen in your life, the steps of a, a warrior of God, a valiant one, those steps of those persons are ordered of the Lord. And it says, and the Lord, Father God, delights in their ways, the course of action that they take and the things that they're doing. The Lord delights in it because we do things in God's manner, in his way, and in sync with his will and his purpose. Praise the Lord. So that's what's happening to you. You're a champion of God. The Lord will not allow you to be tested beyond that which you're able, but will make a way of escape that you'll be able to, uh, to bear it. So he understands that uh, what he's allowing to take place in your life, although it's negative, is a collaborative effort in order to get you to a point where it works out for good, works out for good. Uh, and at the end, you'll say that. And I can say that now about a lot of these really bad things. Uh, I, I'll just share a testimony. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, I worked in corporate America, and we were in the process. I sold computers and software. I actually developed software. Uh, I was a programmer. I was a manager. I was a developer. Ultimately, I ended up being a consultant. And uh, I was a director. So I've gone through a lot of different phases. But in the phase as a systems analyst, I worked for a large uh, major corporation. And uh, we had an, uh, an opportunity for me to go. I had good skills in networking at the beginning of networking. And so uh, they sent me out to uh, an account. And um, the company I was working for was trying to dislodge the, the material that was there, the equipment that was there. And it was substantial. Millions of dollars of equipment were, had been sold our competitor's equipment, was uh, in this enterprise, and they asked me, uh, I had been working for this company after I had retired from the former one, uh, I guess I'd been about a year or so in the field, and so I was pretty good at articulating positions and comparing competitor stuff to what we had, and also had another special skill the Lord had prepared me for, and that is, I, I was involved in networking before they had everything written on the paper, and so I had to piece together solutions that will cause there to be interoperability between competitive parts. So the big thing there was, and the same thing is here today, is to put equipment out there and design them in such a way that they don't interface with other competitive uh, equipment. And so I had figured out how to hook them all together so they could live peaceably. Uh, the ultimate goal, of course, was to put our equipment in there, and so you had to get your foot in the door. So I was the guy to go along with the sales guy. I was sales and systems, and so I gave a presentation. 
And I didn't know on this particular occasion that they were going to have me get up and do a presentation. So I'm seated at this round table, and all the significant people were there. Uh, I believe one of the vice presidents of the company, the president may have also been there, uh, and most of the techies were there, and uh, uh, these are the ones that snipe to find holes and problems in what your presentation. So I knew why they were there, uh, but I didn't know that this, I was going to have a, a premier part in selling equipment that day. Uh, I thought I was just coming to do a, a small presentation about software. And the salesperson had set me up, didn't tell me in advance, actually drove me to the place and never, I don't know why he didn't open his mouth, I guess he felt that I had the ability and the cumin to be able to deal with any kind of audience. And so I got there sitting at the table and all at once this fellow said that it's, it's a pleasure to be here today and I brought one of our consultants with us, uh, Will Nutt. And uh, take it away, Will. So, and, and when that took place, that statement, I'm sitting at the table, it's a great huge round table with all these people uh, sitting around that table. Um, Niagara Falls of sweat began to pour out from under my uh, my underarm, my my under my out of my armpits. I could feel it running down both sides, and I had a nice suit on, and uh, and I, and my hand, my legs start shaking under the table. I mean, it's it that kind of thing. And normally I'm good at doing presentations, but he just caught me completely off guard, and so I had to figure out how to how to quiet myself, quiesce myself. Uh, my legs were shaking, so I didn't stand up quite for a few seconds till my legs stopped shaking from uh, fear. My hands were sweating and uh, clammy, and uh, then I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you said you would not allow me to be made ashamed. See, you can use that scripture, the salvation scripture, that said, those who believe in me shall not be made ashamed. And I had to use it literally in corporate America at that point. And you know, all, these, all eyes were on me. There's a big black board, uh, actually it was a white board in front of us. And uh, I said, Lord, give me a word. I don't know what to say right now. Nothing's rehearsed. So as I walked towards the board, the Lord said, just draw a, a hypothetical network. And I picked up the uh, marker that was there, and I started drawing. And I said, I need to set up a hypothetical network. The Lord gave me that word. And I drew a picture of a hypothetical network. And I actually put their equipment in there that I had done some studies on to see what they had. And uh, sort of left it void. So I can put in the equipment that would interface and so I said to them, you have a, quite a, a complex network, and, uh, and I understand the things that you want to be able to do is networking and management and all that. So I went through the whole uh, discussion, and then I started drawing boxes, pictures of boxes, putting the names of them, interface boxes, and I, next to the, the actual component I drew on the board, there was software. So I'd write the software they had, and the software that we had that was going to allow it to be managed, run uh, from one location. And so I went to the whole presentation, and at the end, um, I had drawn some pictures of certain boxes that we were selling that uh, we'd like to, for them to try out. And so I put them in the diagram, and they asked me all sorts of questions because the snipers were there. They were trying to find holes. They, a number of them stood up when I did the presentation and uh, gave me applause when I was finished. And then they started talking amongst themselves, saying how all this stuff would work, and they didn't know there was anything available to allow them to... Uh, gradually, you know, moved into a slightly different environment. So the Lord protected me. The Lord made me the, the superstar. And then in a few days, we were able to sell, I think it was two large box solutions. And uh, I got the credit for that. So I thank God for him. He'll help you not just in your regular day-to-day -day routines. Praise God. He'll help you with a life-challenging circumstances that can come. And some of y'all are going through that right now, those who are professional people. Uh, they don't always tell you, to prepare yourself with a presentation, you have to have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, to intervene and help you with whatever is coming against you. And so I got success out of something that was terrible. You know, I was sweating, perspiring, legs shaking, because I was frightened. I wasn't prepared. But the Lord prepared me. He will not, the scripture I use, he will not make you uh, ashamed, will not allow you to be made ashamed, and the Lord intervened. And I have a host of testimonies I can share with you how the Lord can intervene and make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Because we serve a powerful God. If you live for him, praise God, I don't care how complex your environment is, how difficult it is, the Lord will give you the words to say. You won't have to worry about verbiage coming that you need to articulate to deal with whatever the situation is. Let me get back to the scripture here. Because we were talking about uh, Joseph and his ordeal because of... Uh, the Lord has put his hand on him and blessed him and prophesied to him and told him that he would uh, uh, 
be the head of his household, that his father and his mother would bow down to him and all his brothers, the one who actually uh, caused him to be in slavery, would do obeisance to him. And uh, be, because uh, he had an esteemed position, the Lord allowed him, his father to give him a coat of many colors because he was a royal child. And uh, that's it. Uh, royalty, praise the Lord, Lord, will bless you even in advance because he saw the end from the beginning. He knew he had something in him that his brothers didn't have. And unfortunately, the devil knew it too. So that's why he tried everything he could to drive it out of him, to drive out that uh, quality he had that the Lord is going to use to bless many people. And the same thing is happening to many of you who are watching me today. Uh, some of you have been called by the, the God. I mean, you have gifts and you have abilities, but it's not quite enough. You work, you're running on two cylinders. Uh, and and the, the spirit man is not completely alive yet. So you're using your emotions, your soulish part, uh, your intellectual power prowess, your ability to think clearly and all of that. But there's another part that's supernatural that can help you with things that you don't know coming across the horizon. And so you need to experience that. And the Lord will set you up in a way such that uh, when you get to that position, you'll be able to embrace it and be a total person, spirit, soul, and body in the things of God, as the Apostle Paul says. I would that you uh, behold in the Lord, spirit, soul, and body to the coming of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. I'll get back to the scripture here. So in, in Psalms 105 and 17, uh, we see the account that's describing what happened to, uh, uh, to Joseph after he was slowed into slavery. Uh, let's read it. I'm going to read from New King James Version. He sent a man before them, his name Joseph, who was sold as a slave. We understand the condition. They hurt his feet with feathers, those are shackles that he had been put in because he had been sold as a slave, so he had to be ruled over by a slave master and some negative things happened in his life that were not pleasant. Uh, he was laid in irons. Look at the 19th verse. Until, uh, everybody here, until the time that his word came to pass. So until the time that the word of God had come to pass, that he had prophesied to him, that he'd seen in dreams and visions, that he related to his mother and father uh, until the time, notice it, until the time that that word, a word from the Lord, and that's what you need. Some of you probably have heard a word from the Lord. It hasn't manifested yet, but if you stay in tune with the things of God, it will manifest. There will be a manifestation of those things that God has declared to you, and that's the reason why we have the supernatural, where God can communicate to us from the supernatural into the natural, praise God, and cause things to happen so he can get glory uh, through you as a child of God, as his representative, as his ambassador in the air realm. He says that's what we are, you know, if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and make him the Lord of our life and begin to live for him the way we should. He made it clear that we would become his ambassadors in the earth realm. I am an ambassador of Christ Jesus. And if you are trying to toy with the idea or wonder about it, just say it. Speak things that be not as though they were. By faith, just say, I'm an ambassador of Christ Jesus. Right now, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but ultimately, I will get there. Praise God. I'll be just like Joseph. At the appointed time, there will be a manifestation of those things that God has placed in my heart. Praise God. About future events that I don't see yet, but I believe they are coming my way. And I'm going to begin to develop myself to the full stature of Christ Jesus. So at the appointed time, I'll be able to launch out into that new frontier that I never experienced before. I, I, it won't hurt you. You'll enjoy it. Praise God. Walking, praise God, as a child of God in the supernatural amongst people who are not completely turned on. You know, I, I like movies, especially those that are clean. Sometimes I have a hard time today, especially people like profanity. They think that that raises the, the, the credits and the ratings. And it probably does because most of our people uh, are not saved. But I like some of the lines, the storylines. And, and I read, a, I watched a movie years ago. It's still around. Uh, it was called The Matrix, The First Matrix. And uh, I found out about that. You know, the Matrix was supposed to be the place where all sorts of people live, you know, every caliber of people, just like the earth here. And, you know, you find all kinds of people in the earth, and some are turned on and some are turned off. And they were talking about this idea. Of course, this is man-made, a fantasy, you know, how people are not turned on and they, they're not plugged in uh, to the one who has the knowledge about everything. And I thought about that. I said, you know what, I'm dealing with people that are automatons. They're not completely plugged in, so they're going to do things that they think is all right, but it's not. And so I say the same things here. There is some merit of truth in the, the movie The Matrix talking about uh, the fact that one has to be plugged in to a supernatural force. In this instance here, Father God himself 
in order for him to do, he or she to do supernatural things. And if you never get plugged in, you'll never be able to experience fully what the Lord has for you on the other side. No, there is suffering and challenge that comes, praise God, with it. But there's also manifest blessings that also follow as well. Let's get back to the chapter and verse at hand. Psalm 105 and uh, uh, 19 said that uh, his feet were hurt in the shackles and uh, the irons that he was wearing, these were uh, restraining irons that the people used to use back in the day when they um, were taking care of slaves and things. When you were in their inner prison, um, they, were, they would restrain you in this fashion with shackles and with irons. Uh, it said, until the time that the word came, this is the word of the Lord. Uh, so you're going to go through things until the time the word will come. The word will manifest itself. When you experience the fact that you finally arrived, you finally go into the test of the challenge uh, through which you will obtain the victory and bring glory to God and move to the next level in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord tested him. So the word tested him the full time, praise the Lord, that he was going through this ordeal. And there was quite a number of years that uh, he had to work as a slave. He got promoted as a slave until finally he made it to an esteemed position, which I'll read shortly. But I want you to notice here that he had to go to the interim state where he was fully tested. We, uh, we talked about uh, the Lord getting rid of the dross, you know, taking us to the same kind of process, the metallurgical, metallurgical process that metal goes through in order for it to be uh, clean of impurities so that it can be a higher quality. The same thing is true with us. The Lord is trying to get stuff out of us so we can be the quality that he needs for one who's going to be ultimately an ambassador of Christ Jesus. So the word of God, the promises God has given you, is going to test you. And the testing you're going to have doesn't look like it's the promises of God. Being down in a dungeon certainly is not a person who has a, a robe. And it certainly is not a person of esteem who has people bowing down to them and doing obeisance to them. Uh, but yet that will happen. But you have to go through some things before you get there. So can you imagine what's going through the mind of Joseph when he was uh, a slave and when he was uh, a servant in the house of Potiphar, who was one of the leaders there in Egypt, before he ascended the throne as second only to uh, Pharaoh in all of Egypt? Uh, it took a while for him to get there. Uh, he was lied on. Uh, he, was, he was promoted. Maybe you're going through that and he got promoted and he got demoted. Uh, promoted and then demoted. And it wasn't fair, it was based on lies, and that's what happens a lot of times, even in our life. The Lord will allow you to get promoted, and you say, well, I made it. Even though I'm a slave, I'm the head slave. I'm over everything in the household. The next thing you know, they're going to put you back in the dungeon. Praise the Lord. Remove that stripe and start you all over again. At least it feels that way. So you have to uh, walk by faith and not by sight. And that's what the Apostle Paul tells us in Second Corinthians 5 and uh, uh, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. So it's not what you see. It's what God has put in your heart, the word that he's promised you. You have to hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. So Paul chimes back in, and he tells us that. So confession of faith without shaking. You can't be shaking. When God gives you something, you got to believe it's going to happen, despite what you see around you, that God's going to ultimately bring it to pass. Especially, you know the mind of God. You know the heart of God if you're a child of God. Um, Paul says you, you, you can know the heart of God. He says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered in the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared for us, but it has been revealed by his spirit because we have the mind of Christ. So Paul says that, and I believe in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the latter part of that chapter, he said, he's making it clear that things uh, are incomprehensible, things are beyond our natural means. But if you have the spirit, the Holy Spirit living within you, resident within you, that the Lord will reveal you secret things that you couldn't possibly know unless the Holy Spirit had told you. And so uh, the Lord will reveal to you certain things. And with uh, Joseph, he revealed to him things, dreams and vision. He had a dream uh, that positioned him so he could uh, uh, be promoted to the next level. It took him a while. Even though you may do things in the name of the Lord, it may be supernatural. But the people you're dealing with have to be impressed by the Lord. And sometimes he doesn't impress them uh, the first year, the second year, or even the third year. But ultimately, at the appointed time, the Lord will impress them to bless you and so that you can fulfill your destiny. But uh, in the interim, you have to hold on by faith. And we, this is a faith walk that we're in. Things, bad things are going to happen, and the Lord will permit them to see if you're going to hold on to the next level. And that's what it's all about, this toil in this life. It's for other people to see 
uh, and to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The, the knowledge that uh, they're growing in is based upon what he saw you go through. To follow them who through faith and patience, you know, who possess the promises. So you got to go through faith and patience, the one who's waiting and waiting, and where patience is uh, uh, awaiting that has uh, the proper attitude, a cheerful disposition uh, until there's a manifestation. It's hard to have a cheerful disposition when you're going through a, a problem, a significant problem in your life, and God seems like he's gone to sleep. No, he hasn't gone to sleep. It's just not the proper time for a full manifestation. And can you hold on until it's time, a proper time? The Bible talking when the time was fully come. See, and sometimes the Lord doesn't reveal to us when the time is fully come. So during that fully coming time, you need to be connected to the Lord and not begin to charge God foolishly. Like in the scripture, we talked about Job that he didn't. He went through all kinds of terrible ordeals. He could have got mad at God, thrown in the towel, and this Christian thing don't work. And we had quite a few that's, and I'm sure all pastors can say that's gone through that church that's thrown a towel in. And uh, the same thing with Apostle Paul. We, I don't know if we got to him yet, but we'll talk about demons. People working right there with you, seeing the signs and the wonders and all, decide to throw in the towel and go live for the devil rather than living for the Lord. So that's going to happen. The Lord will allow it to happen. It's, it's based upon what's inside the human being. So he knew from the very beginning that that person not going to be with you. That person not going to go along with you. That person has an alternate idea and, a, and an alternate, uh, what's the word here? Slant. Got something in their spirit you didn't see or detect. And I didn't let you see it. And they're not going to be with you. They're not going to do the things of God. They have another agenda that doesn't sync with my plan and purpose is. So I used them as long as I could. Now it's time for them to be kicked to the curb because that's where they want it to be. They left willingly. They did not stay with the things of God. And now you see their full cult, not their full maybe, a measure of what they're really all about. It has nothing to do with Christ. So, uh, and that's the way life is. Some things we know, some things we don't know because uh, that is the purview of God. The things that reveal belong to us as men. The things that are not revealed are secrets that belong to God. And at his pleasure, he may let you have a glimpse of what's going on really. So back to the verse at hand, uh, mm -hmm. Psalms 105 and 19, that the word of God challenged or tested him until the time that his word, his word came to pass. Now you can look at it two ways, the word of God, the word of the Lord, or the word that he had received from the Lord. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the word of the Lord tested him. So the second part is the word of the Lord, what the Lord has said. His word could be the word that the Lord said to him for him to uh, wait for until there's a manifestation. Surely it will come. Uh, though it tarry, wait on it. In the book of Haggai, uh, the, the same thing. You know, even during the, in the law, it's the same thing, that the things of God will come to pass. But it, it may uh, take a period of time. It may linger a while before it manifests, but at the appointed time, it shall surely come to pass. Uh, let's go to uh, the 19th verse again. It says, until the time the word came to him, the word of the Lord, what, listen to this, tested him. We've talked about it. It means tried or tested. Both words are used. If you look at the old King James version, uh, I believe it says tried, but it means the same thing, tested. Uh, uh, so it's a Greek word, uh, seraph, seraph. And what it means, I mean, not a Greek word, Hebrew word, seraph, or, um, yeah, seraph. And I was like, the word saw is always in that. Uh, meaning to fuse. It means there's some pain associated with it. To fuse, like uh, you're fusing metal. Uh, watch this. To, to refine, to cast for a mold. Uh, I, I found that was fascinating. It, it says to cast in the, uh, the Strong's Concordance, but the context of cast is to put a cast for a mold. You, you shape uh, a, a, an area that's been, normally it's in metal or some um, uh, 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 metallurgy or uh, metallurgy or some metal that's not going to melt itself, but it's at another level that be able to accommodate uh, what's going to be poured into it. So it's like taking us and pouring us into a mold to shape us in a form that God has planned for us uh, for the advancement of His purposes. So, and the next thing, um, to cast for a mold, to cast for a mold. Notice that to cast you in certain forms so you can accommodate a mold, uh, a purpose, a plan that God has for you as a servant of the living God. To melt, uh, to melt you. Sometimes that stuff has got to be melted in order for it to mold us. Or to purge away impurities. That's the other thing. Not only to shape you, but to get rid of stuff in you that shouldn't be there. Uh, waste products, the dross. Uh, and to confirm quality. So the other thing is to test your quality. Sometimes it's uh, more than just setting a mold. 
but the Lord is testing you, putting through situations to see what you're made out of. It's not so much that he doesn't know, but you, a lot of times it's for you to see yourself and also for others who are with you to see who you are. Uh, and folks are watching when you're going through stuff and your response to bad things, especially bad things. It's real, real easy for them to understand you're jubilant and happy because God is blessing your life and a new car, a new house, healing in your body and all that. They understand that. But you know, the part that really grips people's heart is that when you're going through the downtime, the worst time, the hard times, they see how you handle that. That's what impresses them. Praise the Lord. I mean, you look at a lot of these stories and movie lines and make it clear. And even in life and even with the people you've dealt with, those who've gone through hell and high water and it's kept standing. Those who stand through adversity are the people that you respect. Uh, and then it's fine. They, they, they stand through adversity and they tell you part of the hell they have to go through in order to get to the bounty and the benefits that God had promised them. The word of the Lord finally came to pass. But then the, 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 the interesting part is, what did you go through? And then they start sharing what you went through. And you mean you still live? Yes, I still live. God is faithful. You know, it took me a number of years to completely get through it. I held on to the horns of the altar until there was a manifestation of God's promises. He, he didn't say his promise is going to come tomorrow or two days from now. He didn't even say it's going to come in a year. Praise God. It, it, that's not our purview. It's not our, our, uh, none of our business. It, it's God's business. So he may leave you in something a long time, but it will come to pass. Although it tarry, wait ye on it. It shall fully, it shall surely come to pass. God bless you. Let's get back to it. So what we see here is adversity is part of being a child of God. Praise the Lord. And uh, get back to the scripture here. There. Uh, I'm going to go to verse uh, verse 19. Yeah, verse 20 of uh, Psalms the uh, uh, 105. It says here, the king, referring to Pharaoh, who was the king of uh, Egypt at that time, sent and released him, being uh, Joseph, uh, the ruler of the people let him go free. Uh, look at the 21st verse. This is after he had answered, uh, had given him the, the interpretation of what the prophecy was about the fat cows and, and the thin cows and, and how about poverty, thin cows being the poverty that's going to come for seven years. Look, look at this. Poverty's going to come for seven years. And the fat calves that came up later on, uh, actually it was reversed. The fat cows, I mean they were having a good time, was going to be eaten up by thin cows. Praise the Lord. And uh, that's going to be seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. So uh, he interpreted that vision that Pharaoh had had and nobody else could. And so he was uh, promoted to a position of esteem only second to Pharaoh in all the land. So he was second to the king. He had authority over everything. And the Lord positioned him. Notice this. The Lord positioned him with the wisdom of God so he could tell the king what to do, to tell Pharaoh what to do. So that all the people could be blessed and live through the time of famine, through the seven years he let them go through, seven years of famine. And then uh, uh, Joseph told him how he could set up storehouses and things of that nature, take the grains during the seven years of plenty and put it in, in big uh, uh, grain uh, containers and, and uh, 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 storage uh, houses. Uh, to store the grain there and all the food and things you could keep that wouldn't perish, uh, non-perishable things that you could eat off of, probably beans and anything you could dry out and put there, dried figs. You can think of a host of things that uh, will last for seven years uh, and will not spoil. So he, he, with the wisdom of God, went and told the king what to do, and he did that. And all of those people that were living at that time in, uh, in, in Egypt uh, were sustained for those seven years. And then the seven years of famine, and even during the seven years when there was no crop growing in the fields, they had food stored up, stocked up, waiting for them to, to live for these seven years. And uh, later on we'll find out that the Lord positioned him there because he wanted to save and preserve his seed. The seed was the seed of Abraham, which at this time here uh, was Jacob. It come his turn. He was the grandson of uh, Abraham. And now there was no food even in the uh, uh, Israel, and they came down. That's the whole story. You probably should read this to get all the details. It's really intriguing. Uh, his brothers, who had thrown, it, thrown him into slavery, came down to get food substance from the Egyptians because the food they had, nothing was growing anymore, and they were about to starve to death. And guess who was sitting there, second in command? Oh, then they just like God. Ah, oh, my God. Second to Pharaoh. This kid 
with a coat of many colors, whom his brothers hated because he was blessed, had sold him into slavery to the Midianites, who then sold him to the, uh, um, the Egyptians. And he drew, went through all the hell and high water in order to get to a steam position because his gift made room for him. And he was positioned behind Pharaoh. And if you just read the story, the Lord toyed with his brothers who had, didn't know who he was because he looked different. See, during that time, uh, the Egyptians knew how to put paint on their eyes and fix their mustache and their hair differently from the Israelis. So you can look at a person after about seven, eight years, they don't look the same, especially if they're grown. Uh, and uh, he's sitting there listening to all of them, what they had to say. His brothers, when they come to get some uh, food stuff to take back to uh, uh, his, uh, Jacob and uh, didn't know that they were talking to their own brother that sold, sold in the slave. And finally, later on, he revealed who he was. And it was a wonderful uh, reunion that took place before his brother. And uh, he said this, you meant it to me for evil, but God meant it to me for good, to, to save a people of God. So he knew, but he didn't know until he had gone through all that hell. See, God didn't tell you nothing. You just have to go through it. You have to trust him. And so as, he didn't find it out until he finally realized that all my family is going to starve to death if I hadn't gone through all the things that the Lord put me through to get me to this esteemed position. And the prophecy has come to pass. I said to my brothers, and they hated me for it, that all, all of y'all, all 10 of y'all right now, every single one of the 12 of you, all of you, the 11 of you that's going to show up, you're going to bow down on your knees to me. You don't even know who I am. And then he finally he revealed who he was. You're going to have to bow to me, just like I said. My mama and my daddy, the sun and the moon, they, been depicted there in that dream that I had. They're going to have to bow too when they come into Egypt because I am the king, second to the king. You have to bow to me. And so he saw a fulfillment of the dream that he had when he had that coat of many colors, that God had a plan for him. And he didn't know the plan was going to be a blessing. See, God, he'll, he'll tell you something's going to come in your life, but it's for blessing for other people. See, that's the problem with folks. They get greedy, and the Lord bless them with stuff. That stuff ain't for you. It's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Now, he'll bless you through it, but it's not the purpose. He's not looking at that, how much money you have, you, you know, how many houses you all got, you know, and how many people you run in the church. He don't care about that. It, it, he'll keep it skimpy. And if you have an idea and a perspective of things of God, it always makes it ugly, so nobody want it. The, if you look at in the wilderness, the tabernacle, it was covered. But ugly badger skin and all kinds of dried out skin that if you saw it from a distance, it looked like an ugly heap. One thing is a bunch of trash stashed out there. Praise the Lord. They need to go out there and knock it down. But if you went inside, it was ornate and beautiful, filled with gold and jewelries and all sorts of things. That's the way the Lord is. The stuff he has for you is ugly on the outside. It takes the spirit to comprehend what's on the inside. You can't see unless you've got spiritual eyes what God has for you over the heart. And you have to believe by faith until he gives you a glimpse of the things that are really here, praise God, by natural means, but you can never see it. Praise the Lord. And so we get so caught up in the natural stuff, we forget about the supernatural, which far exceeds anything you could ever comprehend. So he was, Joseph. He never could see all that stuff was coming, but then there's a fulfillment. Let me finish reading here. Uh, let's go to, uh, we're almost done. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Psalms 105, and we're going to go down to the... Uh, um, 21st verse. He made him Lord of his house, this king, the Pharaoh in Egypt, and ruler of all his possessions. He said he had all the possessions in his care because he saw the, the wisdom of God was in him. He saw he had a good, Bible even talks about it, said he had a good spirit in him. See, people, they'll promote you even to the next level, interim levels, because they see your attitude is right. You ain't mad about flipping your head back and forth and snapping your tongue, like, you know, in resistance. Like, I don't like what you did. You, know, you have to be cooperative in order for God to bless you. And uh, I've run into so many people who are not cooperative. Even those are men of the cloth. You know, they, they don't understand how life really works. You've got to have a, a mellow attitude. And if you mess up, you need to com confess, repent, genuinely repent, and stop doing it. Stop acting bad and naughty and resistant and game plan and all that stuff. Because the angels see it and they're writing it out. They're looking and they're booking. Why are you sitting there acting a fool? And playing, pretending, it all been written in the book of works. And uh, if, you, if you make it to the Bema seat, you're going to be judged out of that. 
And you're going to lose rewards. You'll still make it to heaven, but you're not going to get the rewards you thought you were going to get. If you cross certain lines, uh, you won't even stand before the beam of seat, before the Lord Jesus. You're going to stand before Father God at the white throne judgment. And they're going to look at the uh, same book, except they got all the bad stuff you did. And then when he looks at that, uh, Father God will cast you into a lake of fire where you'll burn forever and ever. Skip back. Y'all don't believe that. But if you stay around listening to me, I'll give you scriptures. You'll start believing in it. Uh, the 22nd verse. To bind, this is referring to Joseph, his princess at his pleasure. So if you want to bind him, he can do what he wants because he, he's the boss now. He's second only to Pharaoh. See, people, when they see you get to an esteemed position, they sit and wonder, oh, how do you get there? You know, I even looked at some of the promotions I went through. And people who had messed over me got a chance to see me in my promoted state. They couldn't, it looked so good to them, they couldn't even look at me. Isn't that funny how in the airport, the Lord let a person who was trying to fire me see me in my promoted position, an esteemed position. They couldn't even look at me, but they wanted to know what I was doing. And the Lord let me, uh, you know, give a bone to one of the guys to take back, share with them. But uh, the Lord is that way. And how is it that I end up in a hotel, in a in a a, a uh, airport uh, thousands of miles away from my home, thousands of miles from their home, and we get there at the same time in the evening. I mean, that's just not heard of. And at a weird time, and they're there with a team, not just the person who messed over you, the team who gets to see how the Lord had esteemed and promoted me. Not just Joseph, you get promoted too. And then the Lord let them see you. And uh, I thought about that. I said, Lord, let, let them see me dressed up with my attache. I'm the boss. At that time, I think I was already um, promoted to uh, a position of, uh, uh, of esteem. I was a director then. Um, the next step would have been vice president. And that's something the Lord let them see you. Let see me as a director. They had other plans for me, but the, the devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for what? Good. And so you got to think of those things, praise, when you read the word of God. Here you see the Lord taking uh, a bad situation and turning it around for good. Joseph's ordeal places him in a second position only to Pharaoh, where he is able to bring his family, Israel, which I mentioned earlier, to Egypt to sustain them and provide provision for them through the remainder of the famine, which lasted for seven years, seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, that was in the land. So I want to transition here and return back to the story of Job uh, momentarily. But I just wanted one verse I want to read, and I, and I said it to you uh, and, and this is something interesting. He said, what you did to me, uh, this was uh, Joseph speaking to his brothers. I want to make sure you get this. He said, you meant it to me for evil, but God meant it to me for good. Uh, to, to provide means whereby my family, my entire family, all of our people, all the Israelis could live. The Lord let me go through all kinds of hell so I could be a blessing to you. Uh, it's in the 40. 42nd chapter. You probably should read the whole thing of the book of, uh, of uh, uh, the book of Genesis, and you'll you'll find you'll run into it. But that's what he told his brothers that uh, their intentions were negative, but the Lord took it and and reversed the decision. And that's what he'll do for you. He'll turn things around uh, so people can live through it. And uh, our story here has been dealing primarily with Job, and I want to just get back to it before we close today uh, with a transition. And uh, uh, the ordeal they, that Job had already endured was not enough. So he, he'd gone through a lot. And uh, we see here that uh, it's not just going to be him. It's going to be others, too, who are believers, followers of the Lord, just like Joseph. who go through all kinds of things uh, in order for them to fulfill uh, the things of God, in order to bring his purpose uh, into manifestation. And so... And the enemy is going to constantly be on the scenes. And I just want to say this one, a few things. I want this in your mind before I end today. Go to second, Job, the second chapter, verses 4 through 8. Uh, this, this Satan coming against, uh, uh, at that time, Job, uh, the Bible says in uh, Revelations 2 and 10, he is the accuser of the brethren. If you're a child of God, a brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in the spiritual context, the devil will come after you and challenge the Lord on your behalf uh, because of you being blessed. So Satan answered, this is Job 2, verses 4 through 8, uh, answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his, his life. He's talking about your skin, our flesh, and the diseases and things that Satan wants to put on us. Look at the fifth verse. But stretch out your hand, see the devil wants the Lord to do it, and touch his bone and his flesh. That's what the devil is telling the Lord to do to Job. And he will surely curse you, 
to your face. Six verse. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he's in your hands, but spare his life. Notice this. Uh, uh, so this, again, is an example of God's permissive will. We talk about permissive will. Notice that the agent perpetuating the attack against Job was not God, but Satan by permission. Look at the seventh verse. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck not God, but Satan. He was given permission. He struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head, eighth verse. And he took for him a potsherd, this is Job, meaning a fragment of pottery with which to scrape himself while he was sat in the midst of uh, uh, the ashes. So he was itching. The boils he had were itching. And he tried to stretch. Can you imagine the whole body just itching? And he tried to get a piece of, uh, of uh, a broken piece of uh, pottery and scrape himself. And some of y'all, if you ever went to chicken pox or measles, I mean, you know exactly how itching is. You got itches that you can't even reach. And he probably said, oh, if I could just reach that. Uh, so yes, put it in a context you fully understand. The Lord allowed him to go through that, that hell because he had a bigger purpose beyond him itching. And he's a bigger purpose than your itching and your problems that you're going through that he wants to fulfill through you. You have to occupy until he comes. You got to continue the things of God until there's a full manifestation. And a lot of times it may last, for Job it was a little less than a year. But some of y'all going through things that have been going on for years and years, just like Joseph. Many, many years of suffering he had to go through before he finally saw the word manifest in his life and the faithfulness of God. And the same thing is true for you. You may go through hell and high water for a long time, but you need to stand your ground. Praise God. Fit cheat about it like men. Put yourself in the right position. Fit, fix yourself up like a man of God, like a warrior of God. Because you're in for the beginning, but can you be in for the long haul? How long are you going to hold on to God? And later on, we're going to talk about Job's wife and how she said, well, how long are you going to do? Hold your composure. Cuss God and die. So you can have people around you that are even close to you. They're going to tell you, forget it. God's done with you. Why don't you just die and curse him and go to hell? And so you're going to have those same kind of people. And we'll talk more about that uh, when we get together next week. I trust you've been blessed by our program today and uh, the Lord took me in the direction that he wanted to go and I submitted to him and that's how you do in order to reach people's hearts because I don't know what's in your heart. God does. He wants you to hear it from me. I thank God that I'm an oracle of God. I'm an ambassador of Christ and you're a subject of God and you're going to be blessed too. Go with God until we come back together. The next time is Dr. Willie Nutt from San Jose Word of Faith Christian Center. God bless. Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161-2822. Or you may request information via our website at www.sjwofcc.org We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.